And uh, I want to welcome everybody here. My name is Mark Sebastian. This is Option Pit, and we're going to discuss using options to trade direction. Now, before I go, I start. I always like to um, I always like to launch a poll. So I've got a, a pretty important poll that I usually do. Let me see here. I don't know why it's not. Huh. It's interesting. Well. Never mind, it is not letting me do that poll. So um, with that, let's uh, let's move on. Um, welcome to Option Pit. I am Mark Sebastian, and I want to welcome you to Trading for Direction, the Option Pit method, using volatility to improve directional trading. That is me talking to Liz Clayman. She is a very nice woman. Um, She's wearing heels there. I want you to know she's probably only five one, but very nice. And uh, I enjoyed. I've met with met dealt with them in studio a few times. They're always friendly. So uh, about me, I was a a market maker, uh, and then um, I spent the last couple of years trading out of the personal account and um, doing a bunch of consulting work. Um, I do uh, options consulting for hedge funds and registered investment advisories and, and things like that. And then, um, obviously, I run Option Pit. I am the founder of this company. And uh, we pride ourselves on really teaching people the way we were taught as opposed to trying to take shortcuts. But uh, it ends up being worth it because my students are super smart. So let's talk about dire directional trading. Volatility can act like a headwind or it can act like a tailwind, all right? Um, so today we're gonna to talk about basic buy-sell decisions uh, to profit from directional trading. We're gonna discover how strike selection can make the difference between a good trade and a bad trade, and then we'll combine uh, buy and sell and strike decisions into uh, a trade that I think pays off pretty, pretty well, and I'll talk about that a little bit. So, uh, options and stock, all right? The key to trading options for direction is correlation, right? Correlation means how one instrument moves with another, all right? Correlation of one means that two instruments will, will, will move perfectly with another, all right? So if one, if one stock goes up a dollar, the other one will go up a dollar. Um, now, the correlation of an option can never be greater than one or negative one. There are all sorts of stocks that can have correlations of three, four, five, whatever, okay? You look at some of those uh, double and triple ETFs, they've got crazy correlations, all right? So, but an option can never correlate at more than one or negative one to its underlying with generally, all right? There are a couple of tiny exceptions, but that's getting really into minutia, all right, that you don't need to worry about. All right, delta, all right? The option trader is the option trader term for correlation. All right, you know what it is? I, I have a theory that a bunch of guys standing in a pit don't want to say correlation back and forth, so they came up with the term delta. All right, in delta, in math, delta can also be called slope. All right, delta, delta can change with the passage of time, change in price, or one important factor that we will talk about. Delta can be described in many ways, but the one most commonly used is the correlation of an option to its underlying, as I stated. Thus, an option with a positive 0.6 delta will make 60 cents for every dollar the underlying rallies. It will lose 60 cents for every dollar the underlying falls. All right, what makes delta so hard is that relative to stock, it, the delta can change on a trader. Again, some are really easy to understand, like price movement and passage of the time. The one that is probably the greatest effect and throws traders off is volatility. All right, that is a big, a big wrench in a lot of people's engines. And uh, people that don't understand volatility generally fail at trading options. So. Tell me if this has happened to you, all right? And I'm going to do the voice that my wife does when she thinks that I'm talking out of my hind end, okay? 
So uh, you know, when I when I go off, pro you know, giving some speech about something that I don't know very much about. All right, you guys pick a subject. Uh, aeronautics. All right, I don't know much about aeronautics. Sometimes I will go off on a soliloquy on um, aeronautics. Let's just say. So she does this voice when she thinks I'm talking out of my my hind end. All right, and I'm going to do that. Are you ready? It's Mark. Market makers are, are cheaters. I bought all these calls right before earnings. The stock is way higher, but I'm not making any money. Markets are, market makers are taking my money. And the fact of the matter is, is that no one is taking your money. All right. What happened is one of the inputs in your delta changed. All right. Um, you know, and that input is volatility. All right, so let, let's take a, a brief look at an example here. All right, I'll pull up Apple. Let's look at the iPhone 6 launch last week. Okay, and what I want you to pay attention to, just look at the underlying. All right, is Let's see, when was the iPhone 6 launch? It was, was it the 8th? It was the 8th, right? Yeah, all right. So we'll look at the 8th. Okay. So this is the day before the launch, and Apple's trading 98.36, all right? And let's say that you actually thought, let's say you were smart, and you said, you know what? Apple's not going to do anything. Or uh, let's just say you were smart, and you thought, Apple, this much ado about nothing, the stock is going to sell off, all right? That's what you say to yourself. So you come in. And you go into September, which expires this week, and you say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy the 97 and a half puts, and I'm going to pay two dollars and fifteen cents. All right. Well, let's look at what happens the next day. As you can see, Apple is down 37 cents. All right, 37 cents. So, looking back at my puts, let's look at that delta. 44 delta. So if those were $2.15, a 44 delta, 44 delta option should be worth 16 cents more. So they should be worth about $2.30. Well, let's see what they're worth the next day. They're worth a dollar under a dollar sixty. All right. Well, what changed? Well, take a look at that volatility. All right. Now take a look at the delta. So those are still a forty-three delta, despite the underlying being lower. So what happened? Volatility collapsed. So we're going to pull up a chart. This is a VXAPL. It is the volatility. This is the SIBO VIX of Apple. So this is the VIX calculation. You can see here it is 9.3, 9.4, 9.8, and look at the tank job. And it's just down from there. All right. So Delta can change on you. And that's why understanding volatility is so important. All right. So the Greeks, including Delta, and this is the important part, are produced by a pricing model. How do you figure out what the options should be worth? That's a good question. We're going to talk about that. All right. They are modeled risk. So the Greeks are modeled risk based on inputs into the model. All right. They are meant to help traders manage the risk of a given option position. All right. Now, because they're an output of the model, 
that makes them not a hard number. All right, if something isn't a hard number. All right, that means it can change. You ever heard the term garbage in, garbage out? All right, that is really the key to the Greeks, right? So if you plug in garbage volatility, you're going to get a garbage delta that doesn't do any good. All right, since delta can change and is modeled risk, picking the right option for the direction of directional opinion is key. Should an option be bought or sold? In the money, at the money, or out of the money? It all depends on implied volatility. All right, so what makes trading volatility different than trading a stock? All right, over the long term, where implied volatility of a stock or index is going to go, all right, we know that, all right, we do not know where the price of a stock is going to go. Implied volatility is mean reverting. Underlying, at, underlying prices are not. Underlines can go up, 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 up. Vols will not. So... Here's Apple. Take a look at that 50-day moving average and that 200-day moving average. Seem like there's any real pattern there? No. Now, take a look at the 100-day moving average of VXAPL, that VIX of Apple. You know, it's in a little downtrend but right now, but it will go higher. And you can see that it really does kind of stick to, um, you know, kind of a specific range. All right. So, volatility mean reverts. It's really key. All right. So basically, stock price can go anywhere and stay there. Volatility can go anywhere, but it can't stay there. All right. It's like a bar, right? You don't go have you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. That that's the way volatility is. When volatility gets really high, it's like a bartender at two in the in the morning saying, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. And uh, when volatility gets really low, the bartender does the same thing. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. All right? So that is the way vol works. All right? So understanding that reversion is what's going to help with buy-sell decisions. All right? So now let's cover basic buy-sell decisions. All right? In general, when implied vol is low or near in the near term and especially in the long term, one wants to play direction, all right? Um, one wants to buy, all right? So if you want to play direction and vol is really low, you buy options, all right? When IV is high, so that's implied vol, that's the number your delta is derived from, all right? When implied vol is high or normal, it typically makes more sense to sell options. So there are are two ways to get long. You can sell puts or you can buy calls. All right, each trade acts very differently despite being long the underlying. So let's talk about short puts. Short put is long delta and short vega. All right, vega is an option's sensitivity to changes in applied volatility. All right, thus a trader is hoping the stock moves higher and the implied volatility comes in. All right, any questions so far? All right, good. Um, so the trader is hoping that the stock moves higher and implied volatility comes in. All right, now what makes implied volatility drop? I implied vol often drops because historical volatility drops, right? Thus, a short put is actually a play on lower realized volatility, all right? So when you're selling a put, you're actually betting. Well, thank you. 
um, when you're selling a put, the trader is actually betting that the underlying won't go down. All right, so if you are selling put spreads or puts, uh, credit spreads, all right, bull credit spreads, uh, the bread and butter of the retail industry, what you are not, what you are betting is that the underlying will not fall. You're not betting on a rally. So here's IBM, all right, and what do you notice? Well, implied vol is trading at a nice premium to realize volatility, and realized volatility is dropping. See this range here? And then the stock slowly creeps higher. This was a trade that we did do, right, in the strategy letter. Slowly creeps higher. All right, that is a perfect put selling opportunity. So let's talk about long calls. All right, a long call is long delta and long vega, so it's long the underlying and long exposure to implied volatility. We want fear or the you know the price going into an option to increase. All right, the trader is hoping. The underlying goes up and vol goes up. So what makes that happen? An increase in movement, an increase in expected movement. All right, you're betting on the stock going up. So here, let's take a quick look at. I, I'm going to pull up another example, but let's take a look at one that's in the news right now. Yahoo. All right, so let's say you're looking at Alibaba. And you think Yahoo's going to rally on the news. Well, then we pull up a vol chart. All right. And you're looking kind of in here. And you say, you know what? I know Yahoo's going through some trouble. But, you know, implied volatility is really low. So you're looking at these July lows. All right. These, this is a perfect time to buy, buy a call or buy an option. You know, we can look at, let's, you know, even at, after a big move. Here it is, 36 bucks. We go out and buy an October call. Let's say we buy the October, you know, take a look. The October 38 calls are worth two bucks. All right, let's even go crazy. Let's do the October 44 calls out of the money, or the 45s that are out of the money. All right, or we can look at SEP even. I don't care, but let's do it. Let's just say OC. So the OC 45 calls are 58 cents. Let's see how those things perform. So you get a nice little pop. You know, let's even look like nine eight or nine nine five before you get a big move. All right, so Yahoo's up a little bit, but not a ton. A ton of time has passed, almost two months. All right, how are my October calls? You think my October forty fives? Nice little win. I sat on those calls for two months, and they're worth twenty cents more than I paid for them. Now the next day. Now we're in the money. How about three times your money? I'll take that. Questions on that? Everybody understand? I don't think you're allowed to sell puts in an IRA. Yes, you are. All right, that is absolutely incorrect. Um, there are maybe some firms that won't let you do that, but there are definitely firms out there that will let you sell puts in an IRA. For those that sell option premium and have high portfolio vegas, would you please discuss how to hedge the impact on rising volatility? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, let's remind me to circle back on that at the end. So here's NTAP, and this is a, a one I liked as well. So you can see the volatility gets absolutely slammed. 
and um, you know this is an awesome call purchase. You know you buy around 36, wrote it up. Applied volatility stayed really firm. You know when you buy calls and the underlying rallies, if vol doesn't drop, you will win big. You will win big. What platform are you utilizing for these volatility charts? This is called Live Vol. And um, it is the best option that I let itself. We're out there, and my students get preferential pricing. Um, to be fair, they do pay me a, a advertising stipend. So all things disclosed. But it's the best platform. If they asked me to pay for it, I would pay them. So let's talk getting short. Like going long when one is making buy-sell option decisions, one must take implied volatility into account. All right. When IV is high and one thinks the stock is going to go down, you sell calls or call spreads. Generally speaking, I don't like selling naked calls. Um, I have no problem. I have much less of a problem selling naked puts than naked calls. All right. Um, I do. I have no problem with naked call sales. Well, I think you can see the vol charts um, and and some of the other things. I'm not here to advertise on on live vol, but the, there's there's stuff, um, especially if you're a professional option trader. Um, when IV is high and one thinks the stock is going to go down, you sell calls or call spreads. When IV is low and one thinks the stock is going to fall, you buy puts. So. Let's take a look at a couple examples. So here's a good short call example. Take a look at SLV. This is a while back, but SLV is trading 23 bucks, and the vol is nice and high in here. All right. I mean, just you sell calls and you just sit back and relax. Stock maybe drops a dollar, but you're just the volatility is just piping hot high, and just kind of slowly sinks for the rest of the time. All right, they're begging you to sell calls. So here's a good put purchase. So take a look. Vol's, vol's low. IYR is moving around. We've got the Federal Reserve coming up. All right, this is leading into taper. All right, and and vol hasn't really moved. So vol hasn't moved, but I think uh, the you know I, I think that IYR is going to drop and interest rates are going to rise. Well, guess what I do? I go in and I buy like you know the 70 puts for a song, and then I allow the underlying just kind of fall. It's easy money. All right. Any questions so far? All right. Sounds like we're running all cylinders. So strike selection can make the difference between a good trade and a bad trade. It really is important. What is high vol? Ever, you know, what is high vol? What is low vol? That is stock specific and index specific. You really need to look at um, the individual stock. So, like, you know, if I pull out different stocks, you know, here's Yahoo. All right, well, let's not look at Yahoo. Let's look at like Google. And here's a one-year chart. So you can see Google has patterns. All right, high vol is going to be kind of anything above 25. Low vol looks like it's about anything below 19 and a half. All right, now we've a different stock. We could pull up Amazon. All right, and let's look at one year vol there. And you can see low vol is going to be really anything below 20, 24 and a half. And high vol is going to be anything above kind of 
into call it 32. So you see how every stock kind of has its own volatility range? Does that make sense? All right, now strike selection. The next step is to select the right strike. All right, this is done based on certainty of the next vol move. I was looking at implied, that's correct. <clears throat> this is done based on certainty of the next vol move. When one believes that IV is going to go up, softer deltas make sense, and I'm gonna explain what those are, so don't worry, all right? And when one believes that IV is going to be stable or go down, hard deltas make sense, all right? And that's, hard deltas are deltas that are more deeply in the money, and softer deltas are typically more out of the money. All right, so I'll show you a couple examples. All right, a hard delta is relatively resistant to change in volatility. Soft deltas are dependent on volatility. All right, so when would one want a hard delta? All right, when one isn't sure of the IV future movement, when implied vol is really high, and one isn't sure of the severity of the expected move, but wants to have limited risk. All right, so here's Goldman Sachs. Now, you're going to say to me, Mark, why don't you just sell puts in here? I want to kind of keep things simple. So we're just going to look at, at long call in the money versus, you know, kind of hard delta long call um, versus soft delta long call. All right, so this is a little simple, but I, I want it to be clear. So take a look at this. All right, vol is high, and I made the determine that I want to buy calls in Goldman because I think it's going higher. All right, do you think I go with a hard delta or a soft delta? Well, let's look. All right, so my two options are I can buy the December 110 calls. I can buy one of them for 760. Or I can buy like seven of the 125 calls for 96 cents. All right, and you can see what they're worth afterwards. All right, you can see my, on the 23rd, my 110 calls are worth 10.65, so we're using offer offer, all right. And my 125 calls are worth 119. Take a look at the vols. See that? 29 and 26 and a half, 27 and 22. So now let's do the math, all right. I can buy one Goldman Sachs 110 call for $7.60. That's buying 70 deltas, right? It's a 70 delta call. See that? Or I can buy eight of the Goldman 125 calls for 96 cents. I'm buying 130 deltas, right? Because eight times 17, 130. All right. So now let's let's do the the P and L math. So if I sell. Uh, you know, a week later, I sell my one in the money Goldman call at 10.65. I make three dollars and five cents, 305 bucks for a one lot. So that's almost 50 percent. All right, now I sell my eight 125 calls at 119, profit of a dollar 84 total. So I make 184 dollars on eight calls, or I make 305 dollars on one call. So I spent more money and made about half as much dollars. Do you see why you want to go the hard delta? Now, maybe maybe you say to yourself, Mark, the best play was to sell the 115 put. And you know what? You're right. Probably is. Or like the 115, 100 put spread or something along those lines. You know, Mark, for kind of similar margin. But, you know, I wanted to keep it simple. All right, so in this case, the hard delta was the better trade. All right, so now let's talk soft deltas. As soft deltas are more sensitive to implied volatility, um, there are some very specific times where they can make a lot of sense. All right, when IV is really low, when you're expecting some sort of crazy major move or you want to make like a, real, a, a cheap bet on something. I typically don't 
encourage this one, the cheap bet, but these two are great. So let's look at IBM. This is a time when IBM just got thwacked, right? They came in and crushed the implied vol. All right. And I'm going to tell you why I'm using Goldman and Apple and, and, and IBM in a minute. So they came in and just thwacked the vol. And you sit here and say, you know what? I think IBM's going to move higher. I think this sell-off's overdone. So let's look. So here we are on the 21st. I can buy one of the 185 calls for 680. It's a 16 vol, 75 delta. Or I can buy like five of the 195 calls, 13 IV. It's about, you know, picking up 150 delta, it's a little less. So let's see how the P&L works out. All right, on, my, I, on the 21st, IBM closes 190.29. I pay by one of my 185 calls for 680. I buy five of my 195 calls for 122. So I've got 75 deltas versus 145 deltas. All right. Now, a couple days later, Apple's up three dollars. All right. My one call that I spent 680 bucks on is worth two dollar. I make 250 bucks. You know what? I, I'm never going to be mad at you for making 250 bucks trading, all right? But my five calls that I spent $70 less on are up 515 bucks. That's you know pretty pretty darn near close to 90% in two days. Soft deltas do way better when implied vol is in the toilet, all right? Do we have questions? on hard versus soft delta. You know, you know what to look for. All right. Good. All right. Is one lower how do you differentiate? I I don't understand the that is one lower, how do you differentiate? Uh, is the deltas at 70 versus 17? Yeah, so take a look. You see the the delta is has a 75 delta, and here I'm buying five of these for that are 29 deltas. All right, so that's how I end up buying more deltas. All right, so I'm buying five calls that have a lower delta, but combined add up to 145 deltas. You're just checking the underlying own vol chart, nothing to do with the VIX. That's correct. So the 29 delta is the soft delta. That's absolutely correct. Something that's out of the money that's usually about, um, is going to be less than a 35 delta, is usually soft. All right, stuff in the middle you know, those at the monies are, you know, they definitely have a lot of sensitivity, but I don't know that I'd call them soft deltas. And then stuff higher than a 65 or 70 delta is going to have a hard delta to it. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right, so now here's my little combo trade. So... Are you guys aware that the SIBO has lots of volatility index? So, you know, one of the things I think is important is I try to present people with ideas that they don't need live vol or really any brokerage platform to use to profit from. All right. And the SIBO posts all kinds of volatility indexes. All right. You've got VXD, which is the Dow, the diamond VIX. You've got RVX, which is the Russell VIX, the VXN, which is the NASDAQ VIX. And then there are also ones on like VXEEM, VXEWZ, uh, the, which are, the GVZ is the gold VIX. There's a VXSLV, which is the silver VIX. And then there are actually posts some on equities. So you've got ones on Apple, which is VXAPL, Goldman, VXGS, IBM, VXIBM, Google, VXGOG, 
and Amazon, VXAZN. So the indexes that I just brought up and all the examples that I just showed you, Sans Yahoo, are 100% available through the SIBO VIX uh, charts and you don't need my the, these live vol analytics that I used. Do the live vol analytics help? Yes. So now, this is the trade that I do a lot. So what's the difference between SIBO charts versus the other? Well, SIBO has their own vol chart and live vol does kind of their, uh, slightly their own thing. Uh, live all tries to mute weekend effects. SIBO kind of leaves that out. Um, so, you know, you can, what the key is to just know the symbols. All right. And you can go to SIBO and find them all. It's real easy. SIBO.com. All right. So now follow the VIX methodologies. All right. And when a stock hits a 52 week high or near a 52 week high and that VIX index hits a 52 week low, try buying an out of the money soft delta you will probably be pleased. All right. That is my favorite trade for directional trading. I'll show you one that I've done recently. Take a look at Goldman. So let's look at VXGS. Come on. Uh, what just happened here? And, you know, one of the things we've been doing is, you know, when it gets down to these super low levels, been buying calls. And it's been a really effective way to trade Goldman because look, at, you know, look at the uh, Goldman chart. And you'll see how the live vault chart and the Goldman chart are pretty similar. All right, so here I'll pull up the IV chart. You can see all these opportunity times where Goldman Vol gets in the toilet. You, you buy calls, you're going to do great. Don't get greedy, but you buy calls and, and when Goldman Vol gets, gets in the toilet. And uh, it's, it's been a great play for us. I don't think it's going to last forever, but, uh, you know, that's, that's one that I've definitely been following along with. And, you know, at each of these junctures, it kind of led to a 52-week high. Here you go. you got a nice big move. Vols in the toilet, buy calls, you run them up. All right, here we are again. Still right near the all-time high. Vols in the toilet, buy calls, run them up. I do that trade all the time. I mean, all the time. Um, you know, all right, so here's the questions. All right. When you buy out of the money soft deltas, are you buying with a short time frame? I'm usually buying 30 to 60 days. You know, I like 60 days personally. How do you determine if you should be buying weeklies as opposed to longer term monthly options for expected moves? I almost never buy weekly options, um, I, except for when I'm doing like straddles, things like that. Um, you know, in very specific plays where I've done a bunch of analysis, I'll buy weeklies. Um, and but weeklies are more of a day trading thing, and with my schedule, I don't have time to day trade most of the time. All right, I've got plenty of time to, to position trade and to um, swing trade, but not. Uh, I re I bought thirty delta calls on HD recently. Was the correct soft delta versus hard? Well, did, what was the volatility doing in H in Home Depot? All right, uh, what is the average length of time for a trade? Usually, eh, I'll be in for thirty days. I'll be in for 30 days. So. so this is the, you know, the last time we did that Goldman trade. I just want to kind of show you that. And, um, you know, I want to make a special offer. Uh, you go to optionpit.com slash 17 special, and you can get my silver course without the chat room. All right, if you want the chat room for the month, it's, uh, you know, I, it's 149 bucks. All right, it was still a good deal. It's cheaper than the chat room. But um, just this silver course, which is going to really teach you about hedging, how to buy sits buy when people others are panicking, mastery of the working parts of an option price, how to make market volatility a friend versus a foe, and uh, matching gold to the right uh, price. So it normally goes for $149, and it's uh, going to be $17.25. Do you trade with the gold VIX? Uh, you know, I don't trade a lot of precious metal, but um, 
the gold VIX is a great indicator for precious metal trading. I, I've definitely um, done some different write-ups on that stuff and some studies. All right, and uh, you can go to optionpit.com slash. I actually trade, my bread and butter is uh, VIX. Uh, but yeah, we trade a lot of things in the strategy letter. Um, and uh, yeah, do I do some stuff with SPY? Yes. And Qs. You know, um, but I'll end up usually, usually kind of a more complex trade, like a broken wing butterfly or a fly or straddles, things like that. I'm much more of a volatility trader than a directional trader. But yeah, I mean, take a look at when gold vol gets, you know, let's let's pull up. I mean, I'm happy to pull up GVZ here real quick. So take a look at GVZ here. So this is the gold vol index. Take your time. Sometimes this thing's a little slower at night. So, I mean, what do you think you should be doing here, regardless of the direction you think? Now we can look back a little further. Will this course be sufficient to use other platforms for choosing the right options based on volatility model? For example, Thinkorswim. Yeah, Thinkorswim does have the, yeah, sell puts or sell calls, or, or heck, sell strangles. Um, will this, you know, it's a good course. You're going to learn a lot about synthetics and hedging and things like that and um, collaring and, and, and different pieces of that. Um, and then I actually have a VIX course coming up. Uh, a one-day VIX class. It's going to be three hours, two and a half hours, uh, on Saturday, October fourth. Uh, that we're going that we're offering at uh, forty-seven bucks. You can go to optionpit.com/events for that. Um, but yeah, it, it's a really good course. It's nine sessions, each forty-five minutes, covering really um, uh, synthetics all the way through to collaring and you know building a position for uh, the direction you're trying to, to make it run. Um, it's not going to be as volatility intensive as, as some of the later stuff we do because we want to build a real fundamental base before we really start cramming your head full of volatility information. The CME, it's, it's really, the CME frequently sends out notices when they alter margin requirements for each trading entity. What are they seeing that is raising or loan? It's open interest. When open interest gets really crazy um, and, um, you know, when, when they're seeing lots of price swings. So they're really trying to protect their books because, remember, the CME is a clearing firm. So they're kind of the end-all clearer of those trades, similar to OCC. So when they start seeing thing, too much speculating or not enough hedging, that is what, why they raise things. Right. For those who are unsure, I promise you that you need the silver course more than you need oxygen. You may not realize it yet. All right, Mark, you asked me to remind me near the, near the end to circle back for this one. All right, for those that sell option premium uh, or, and have high portfolio Vegas, would you please discuss how to hedge the impact of rising volatility? Well, a couple options. All right, um, I, I'm never opposed to owning some straddles and spy or different things like that. Um, I would probably skip VIX, um, but... Anytime you've sold a lot of options, there's always something that is, yeah, I'll, I'll put the recording out. Um, anytime you've sold a lot of options, there is always something cheap to buy. So, you know, one of the things we really prescribe at Option Pit is um, it's fine to be kind of net short vega, net long theta, but have some long options in your portfolio 
um, have some things you want to buy. And because if there's lots and lots and lots of things that you're selling, that means there's probably some stuff that's underpriced and probably worth buying. You know, at any given time, about 50% of the market is underpriced, 30% or 50% of the market is overpriced, 30% uh, pretty fairly valued and 20% underpriced. Uh, spend some time finding that underpriced portion. Uh, you keep it for life. So it's yours to watch. They're your videos to download. All right, any other questions? All right. On that note, hopefully I'll uh, I'll see you all at you'll all I'll see you all signing up for the silver course and hopefully at that VIX class as well. Um, I hope everybody has a great evening. Do you have any recommendations for options trading? Um, what do you mean? Oh, shoot me, shoot me an email. We can talk about it. It really depends on you. All right, guys. Everybody have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Good night. Yeah, I'll put an email out. Um, I'll put an email out today. Um, we know with the the link. Actually, I've got a link to the old webinar, to the last one I did on that page. So I am Mark. Andrew's my partner. So, all right, everybody, have a great day.